This is the Soundtrack CP6800 console. It's a 32-12-24. So we've got 32 inputs, 12 group outs, and 24 monitors. This desk would have been used by uh, people like Eric Stewart from 10CC has had one of these, Rod Argent, a lot of production houses in uh, London. I think they sold about 40 of these desks in, in the mid-80s. And they used to retail about 29, 30,000 pounds. These classic, they used to be hooked up to the Soundcraft two inch machines. As I know, I used to install them and repair them and service them. So the Soundtrack CP6800. Um, I'll just quickly go through the features on this desk. Starting at the top of the strip, we've got the 48 port Phantom. We've got a pad for the mic game. We've got a phase. We've got the mic gain itself. We've got a line mic switch. We've got the line trim here. We've got a high pass filter. And uh, we also have a very nice four band EQ, two mid sweeps, high and low shelf. The high shelf is switched at 8 kilohertz and 16 kilohertz. The low is switched at 60 and 120 hertz. So you've got a full spectrum there of uh, adjustment. So you should be able to get some great sounds out of this console. EQ in at six auxiliaries across four buses. One, two, three, four. Hit this switch down. That becomes five. That becomes six. Bit of a compromise, but with the idea being you wouldn't want to send a signal to six effects at the same time. Moving down the strip, we've got the mute button and the solo, obviously, and the pan and 100 mil Alps faders. So these all feed into the main mix, which is here. Um, and also at the groups, rather routing section, which I'll show you in a minute. These 12 groups faders here, these would be to your multi-track system. So these days you'd be using a digital workstation, I'm sure. So 12 sends, 24 returns. So if you've got when to get to the uh, 13 to 24, these faders will double up, so number 1 will go to 13, 2 will go to 14, so on. 12 goes to 24. And the 24 returns, you just hit these tape buttons down and you'll be listening on the rotary pot here. You also have fader reverse, so you can listen to the, the uh, 13 to 24, you can listen to them on the big fader. The idea being for effects returns, you can have all 32 plus 12 all faders happening in remix, you know, it gives you sort of a good sort of control. On the um, monitors, as they're called, you've got four auxiliary sends, sorry, six auxiliary sends, um, one, two, three, four, hit that down, five and six, similar to the line input. The master section, we have got a small oscillator here, up to one 10 kilohertz. That can be sent out to the uh, multi-track machine, to the auxiliaries, or to the patch bay. It's quite useful for using to test circuits and uh, systems, outboard and so forth. So that's just the latest section. There's the six auxiliary masters. Obviously they are the master of the six aux sends from here. You can use these for fold back for musicians. And uh, also on that point, uh, we've got a talkback section here, which can be sent to the studio. This is the gain, there's the mic, there's the actual talk button. These source buttons here will just source the auxiliaries, one, two, three, four, five, six, those will be for doing fold back. Um, you can send the talkback to the groups. In the old days, I used to send uh, talkback to the multi-track machine to the mix or DIR that's actually relates to this button this uh, socket here talk back output right the main <coughs> control room um, <coughs> sources are here that's the left right mix a b c and d these are your two track returns so from your mastering machines like CD recorder or PC Mac whatever you're recording into and we've got a solo level there that's your master for all the solos We've got a mono button to check for phase. Uh, you've got a dim button there. Two sets of speakers, A and B. And we've got headphone level there as well. So there's your phone's output there. Uh, this little bit here is basically uh, in the down position. You'll be listening to the um, 
aux one and two and in the up position to monitor in other words whatever's coming out of the control room so you can send that to the musicians this center section uh, basically used to be a simty a very sort of basic automation system but on this desk now it's just it's used basically as a routing it's a very simple 30 patch system uh, I've got a similar uh, another video on YouTube about the CM4400 but I'll just show quickly basically you just hit 01 which would be the first patch number unlock system you set up your um, destination which is obviously the mix master routing and then you assign the channels into there okay so these will be the signals that will be going to the mix and over here you will bring these in as well this was all to do with the automation system but you still need to route these in if you want to hear anything the bottom section one to two they come up automatically on the mix via the rotary pots here and then you can you can store that and then you can go to another patch patch 02 and have a different configuration so a very simple patching system but it can't be controlled by SIMTI or anything it's basically just you can hit it manually so it probably won't be used what you're buying here is a lovely analog console uh, it's, it's a real vintage job and very cheap as well uh, moving over to the patch bay here it's the usual setup we've got the uh, input here in line in uh, you've got direct out there you've got your send and return which is the for the inserts so you can bring gates compressors and stuff across them, those channels you've got group out there so that's literally coming off the fader and you've got monitor in which is going straight if you had the tape button down here and you want to go straight in you can use these extra inputs uh, you can use these as extra inputs for um, effects returns reverbs delays and things like that uh, there's inserts on the groups obviously if you want to compress a whole load of grouped signals a load of vocals maybe tape tracks that relates uh, literally to the multi-track machine so if you wanted to intercept the signal you, that would be the input to tape and that would be the return from tape uh, moving down we've got the obviously inserts on the mix the main mix inserts you've got a mix out there which is what I'm sending to my speakers you've got a studio out you've got the monitor ins, ins uh, they relate to the two track returns you've got the uh, actual two track sends and returns so these relate to the actual inputs and outputs of the mastering machines some parallels there so you can basically block up uh, different uh, signal you can basically um, parallel up three or four signals coming out of one hole you've got the talkback and oscillator which I mentioned the auxiliary outputs there so that's coming off the six buses and then these are the uh, equipments in and out the tie lines as they're called uh, so these will be wired up to your gates compressors reverbs and things like that that's how you get in, in and out on the back we have the um, EDAX and these will basically be going to all of your outboard and your multi-track machines your speakers control room A and B two track return and send there are quite a lot of looms if you can see them down there with this desk I haven't checked those but um, they're just jacks and XLRs on there at the moment you might have to change those and then we have the 32 mic inputs there so a beautiful console from studio systems in 2014 so this is nearly 30 years old well it is 30 years old it's nearly as old as me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that, you YouTubers, a uh, Soundtrack CP6800. See you on the next one.